All right, so today is August 22, 2021, and we're going to continue our discussion on the Desiderata Extinction Nod. And we'll start off the meeting with uh, Hugh and any updates from the uh, his interactions with Faulty. So do you want to start it off, Hugh? Yeah, so first of all, um, I've got to thank um, Sophie for noticing and kicking off this original thing based on that auction and and particularly Gary for paying for it all so it was it was wildly wildly successful so um, it resulted in this uh, plan that basically now we've got a lot of work in the next 10 months um, but I'll share all the details with you so some of the things I won't be able to say so I'll say on this call but we'll have to edit them out um, but I think most of the things I, I'll be able to say. Um, so, but okay, so the, let's go over what I learned. And th there were some surprises I didn't realize. So I'll start from the beginning. So um, Blondie was very easy to get on with. It was, um, it's, she's very personable. And so um, we got on like a house on fire. Um, one of the things that surprised me, though, was I, I thought I should establish a timeline so that we can't, you know, how much time have we got left, you know, of activism until it's pointless. And yeah, I was thinking they'd probably say until 2030 or something like that. But um, now, um, Lonely said, now nah, we're fucked. We're already fucked. We passed the tipping points. <laughs> so, but you still rebel. But it, I, it surprised me to exactly, you know, asked it. So I, I wasn't, um, I didn't realize that they, they thought exactly the same way. It's just, it's just virtue ethics. You know, you, we are absolutely fucked and soon. And, you know, there's, there's nothing we can really do about it, but you still want to rebel. It's just the right thing to do. And, and also things can get a lot worse. So, yeah. Um, I spoke a bit about geoengineering, saying that you know we we want to try do everything we can to head off you know really bad scenarios like doing geoengineering, and so those um, yeah that's um, Faulty did say something which uh, they didn't know much about geoengineering, but Faulty did say well don't we have to eventually do geoengineering? So I explained a bit about um, the, the dangers of geoengineering, and basically it's just me, it's what we've been doing all along as a civilization, let's kick the can down the road and make things worse later on is the essence of why we shouldn't be doing it. 
but also there's the moral hazard and we should just stop but that's really one of my goals is to head off these dystopian <clears throat> um, futures where we have this kind of e-tyranny and geoengineering okay so so um the the other thing that surprised me is i didn't realize that um focusing on america is very daunting for them for me it's you know it's like my home so i don't i never occurred to me that people think of it as re so we agreed that we would focus entirely on america and the plan of how to get there will will i'll explain now um so yeah, Fawlty asked me to do a pro, you know, kind of project plan outline from what we agreed, and I put it up. Um, I started one and put it up. I sent an email to the extension on the address list. But if you want to see that and you want to be involved in extension, then just send me an email and put uh, your, I'll put your name on my address list. But everybody should take all those names that I have there, those email addresses, and make an address list so we can communicate via email. Um, so yeah, as soon as people have looked, I think tomorrow I will, I'll, um, I'll give a link to, to Faulty for that, um, that, that timeline and project plan. So yeah, so the, the strategy is basically this, um, the starting right now in XR is doing the summer rebellion. So I was just watching the opening ceremony and uh, there were not that many people oh, of course it starts with the banner drop at the guild hall <laughs> and there were more police than i think uh rebels there but it's i mean it just started off with identity politics it opened with identity politics and so we agreed that it's you know we're absolutely that has to go we we have to get rid of wokeism identity politics and all this almost baggage on the left so the the idea is okay this um summer rebellion will be two weeks our assumption is it's not going to get very much press coverage it's not going to get very much um, attention because it's it's pretty tame um and so uh what what we will do i mean this group the, the extinction army will um, start to make, do a little propaganda campaign um, based on that summer of, you know, disparage it and diss it. But I think just to make sure that they stay honest, because if it's, if it is uh, kind of lackluster, what they tend to do is pretend it isn't and say, you know, oh, you know, this shows what you can do and we're making the change and they get all this bullshit. And we must sit on that and quash that and say, you know, have a little campaign to say like, guys, you did fuck all. It was nothing, you know, just, just, just let, don't let them get away with bullshitting themselves. Keep them, keep them honest. And so we, we should do that. And then um, the, um, yeah, the next thing they're going to do is COP26. And so we, um, we should call for boycotting COP26 and do kind of, you know, psyops to do, you know, boycott COP26. They, they're they going to go to COP26 and, and make a big fuss. And uh, I think basically, uh, they're going to, it's, it's not good from my point of view, because I think they, you know, kind of endorsing the government, reinforcing these guys as authorities. And <clears throat> so, so Fawlty um, and Blondie, and I think, you know, it's much better to to boycott it. Um, oops, hang on, I'm going to have to get some water. Hang on. <laughs> so, but this has been a bone of contention with um, with XR, and so it fits with their kind of banner drop mentality that um, they'll go. Um, and so then the same thing applies that it would. Um, be kind of lackluster and then we must point them out for saying look it's it's not working if it is. i mean if it works and it, it does work miraculously then 
you know, props to them, then we've got to accept that. But if uh, it, it goes according to expectations, they need somebody to piss on their fire. And so they don't, they, they don't kill them. So the, the reason is um, that that's one thing for the kind of psyops and propaganda campaign will do. The, the second thing is to start saying, guys, this is not freaking working. We haven't got time for this bullshit. We haven't got time for that identity politics. The organizational structure has to be centralized and it has to be centralized around one figure and that's faulty. And just start priming them. Um, the reason for priming them that way is because, um, so the, um, on the 1st of November is COP26, right? Then the second week of no November, oh, oh no, the 12th of September, okay, before COP, um, is uh, the IB stuff for four weeks. So 12th of September for four weeks is, is the IB stuff. Now that will be hardcore with like, like 300 people. <coughs> um, Faulty thinks he's got. Mm that have pledged to get arrested. Um, and it'll be serious stuff that will really get in the news because it's gonna be blockading, you know, major mo freeways and stuff, you know, with uh, smoke bombs and putting, you know, people, you know, getting on the freeways and stuff. So it's it's gonna be a big deal. Um, and so the, the aim of it, the whole point of the IB action is to, show Extinction Rebellion the difference that you, you know, to show that the contrast of actually as opposed to just having, you know, banner drops and speeches and stuff, which is completely wasted time. So, um, so now um, I introduced Fossey to, to Lionel and he really, really liked Lionel. Um, what he's tasked us to do is <laughs> at the um, closing ceremony, well, we, we're telling him that he must have a, a big closing ceremony or kind of after party from, from those four weeks in, in IB. And what that'll be will be the first iteration of this new tactic, you know, basically ARG tactic. So uh, we described to Faulty how, you know, that Kumari, you know, the, the fake, fake guru and how Lionel did the fake guru thing. Um, so he was, he was thrilled because it basically, the, the thing is to start getting some likeness on this. So what we're trying to say to Faulty is, you know, everybody is doomed out. What we need now is to say, you know, in the midst of this doom, you can be humorous. You, you have that much balls that, you know, everybody knows now that we're all doomed, but it, it's an English thing to be, to say it's part of an English tradition to say, you know, in this adversity, we, we can afford to do Monty Python. That's how ballsy we are. Um, so, uh, so the idea is um, that Lionel and I will, will work out, will, will design that, that evening uh, with a budget of about 10 grand. So I think we can really do something that it will introduce people to the kind of flavor of the, um, you know, latitude society and those, those kind of things. So, um, but yeah, just, just for, I mean, I was, I was thinking, I haven't discussed this with Lionel, anybody that wants to be in on this, then please help out. But, but at the very least it's Lionel and me so far, but uh, um, yeah, so, this, um, you know, the kind of thing is that you would dress up. What I'm saying is that uh, Faulty should invest in medals, right, and have a medal ceremony. So basically, you pin medals on people through. So if you, if you got arrested, if you're one of the 300 people who got arrested, you should have a medal and have a, you know, a ceremony where it's pinned on you. But uh, the the kind of thing I imagine is we, we kind of dress Faulty up as like. Giuseppe Manzini, you know, I, I always thought he, he's a Giuseppe Manzini character. And so, yeah, he would be in a kind of 19th century Italian generals <laughs> uh, kind of outfit is the way we're thinking. And then he will do, 
this crazy act where we, I'm, I'm thinking, and I, I, met, I mentioned this to Fawlty and he, he really liked it, but he completely got, he got the, the plan. And it's to give you a flavor of what we're thinking is he would get a tiny little, little jar um, and say, you know, with water in it and say, you know, this is the elixir of civil disobedience. It's highly, highly concentrated. Just, just one drop of this can make a whole nation just, you know, disobedient. And then he'll like, you know, give, give a tiny drop with a little dropper to each person. But we'll, we, I'm thinking we'll do our last line about this, but I'm thinking we do something where there's a trick. For example, there's water coming out of, um, you know, he's got a little pipe in his sleeve or something. So that he, he never runs out of water and eventually um, they have new shills on that, that it gets more and more evangelical where everybody, you know, gets one drop of, of you know, elixir of disobedience on their forehead and they go nuts and stuff. And then, you know, more and more people get into it and then eventually, you know, is splashing, you know, water on the audience and, uh, you know, because you know, it's a tiny little thing this big, but somehow <laughs> just to splash the end of people. And then eventually it just goes nuts with like, you know, kind of soaker thing. Just, um, so you get the general idea. It's a kind of uh, fun, sh that kind of thing. But the, the idea is a couple of things. It's to establish Faulty as, as an autocratic leader. Um, and so, yeah, we building up to that, we should prime people um, with uh, exactly, you know, that that's the way it should be and say, you know, this, even as an anarchist, the anarchists are not so stupid that they go go to war against a, a hierarchy with a flat organization because you'll be flattened even more if you try that. So, you know, anarchists in, in Spain, they had Deruti and so he was a, you know, he had total control of the anarchist army. So it's like, it, you know, before anarchists got forgot themselves they were quite happy with having an, an you know hierarchy to defeat a hierarchy knowing that you dismantle it afterwards so we have to start pushing these kind of points and stuff and priming them so that they they're ready to to see faulty in that way um the other task so that's one the one thing for me and Lionel and anybody on this call who wants to get involved in that, um, but it should be pretty fun. Um, uh, so then that's the, the one uh, task that we've got. The other thing is, um, yeah, so after COP26, so the idea is, okay, so let's go back to the timeline. It would be, IB would be far more dramatic and have far more impact and Faulty's done all the, the stats and metrics and says that, you know, this this level of thing will get quite a lot of coverage in the national press um, and it'll be quite controversial. So so the it's it would it's liable to be a big success. Then comes COP, COP twenty six on the first of November, where we will say you shouldn't be going here, you should be boycotting it, and then XR will go to COP26 and get mud on their face because it'll be complete waste of time. Um, and so then after COP26, then um, there's, then that, that would mark the start of, <coughs> damn my COVID's bad. Um, that would mark the start of uh, really a rip roaring tear, basically, you know, the, the I showed for the, the stoat and stoat catching the rabbit. If you know that, that uh, little clip <coughs> from that, you know how the stoat goes mad. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> and, a classic, uh, but the, the number of times that comes up, you know, when, when you hear people and think, wow, all you got to do is just show them that. That's the explanation. Yeah, no, yeah, he completely gets it. So, so. So yeah, um, so then what, uh, what comes next after that is um, the 1st of March, 2022. Um, so the 1st of March, 2022 then, then 
Fawlty is thinking that this will be a, a much, much bigger mobilization of the first um, IB mobilization <coughs> using the same tactics. And, and um, he's thinking it'll be on the order of a thousand arrests and, uh, and it'll be enough to, to get uh, world press attention. The idea is that it gets enough attention around the world so that um, it, it gets on the map in America. So then if, if, if it can be dramatic enough, um, then we will start the ARG tactics proper in mid-year 2022. So then we roll out according to, to that. So, so yeah, we still have to be proved. Um, I'll give you a flavor of, you see, Faltis um, knows that we have to change, that this, the old tactics are not working. Um, but I realized that he's got, you know, 30 years invested in all these kind of tactics. It's a big deal to actually let go. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and in, in all these things, it's, it's kind of, um, uh, it's just, you know, it, um, it's just inertia because of kind of nostalgia for the, it's, it's a big deal to just turn your back on all these tactics that have been used and have proved ineffective now and just say that they're obsolete and you're doing something else. Um, so, yeah, so, so he's not, so, so he said, I'll give you a flavor of where, where things are. So he said at one stage, look, you know, we've got old left-wing traditional tactics over here. And then we've got like huge new tactics over here. And he says, I want something in the middle, you know, like, you know, in this middle ground. And so I thought, um, yeah, you don't want to do that. You want to be, that's lukewarm. You want to be hot or cold. You don't want to be lukewarm. But I spoke to Lionel about it. Um, and he, he and I thought, he, Lionel said, okay, well, let's think up a way that we could make it, you know, like 41, a kind of hybrid. So then um, okay, so I, I openly to, told Faulty that the, the IB thing is close to, to nuts because it's like that post that I did. Um, it's not good for the environment. And I said that you'd be far better off just getting straw bale and putting straw bales up in people's loft in Britain. You don't want to get the, you know, get the government to put five billion of stimulus money into the the machine, it'll turn into 20, you know, that 5 million will change hands about four times before the money comes out. So you, you've, you've probably put 20 billion into this fossil burning machine. You don't want to do that. So I thought he said, well, you know, it's not at all for the carbon thing or the footprint. It's just a gambit to, because it's, it's palatable to the government. So he's hoping the government will, will say yes. And I think they're liable to because they're looking for excuses to boost the GDP. But, you know, from an environmental point of view, I said, I showed in back of the envelope calculations, if you, if you slowed down Britain's GDP by 0.06%, you would achieve a bigger carbon reduction than you would from, from this, uh, if, the, if they did another 5 billion grant. So I, I used all the figures that they, they had from the Green Homes grant. So, and all the results they had, and that can tell you it's an environmental disaster. So what I, th I thought was, look, why it's way better to just go put straw up in your loft and have p the people pay for it because then it takes money out of the circulation. It's not spent on you know, carbon and holidays abroad and payroll and all this kind of stuff. It's all this dirty carbon economy uh, you know, takes some money out of it and people to put straw. So now my thinking was that it's probable that, you know, knowing Britain, you can't put straw up in your loft because there would have a million regulations against it. But I, I went, so I thought that what they should, instead of saying, you know, insulate Britain, do a big 
grant, you know, from the government is they should really, really say to the government, they should, um, you know, change the regulations so people can put straw up in the, in the loft. But I thought I'd, I'd better go and see what the regulations are. And I, I was a bit amazed that so many people have been doing straw bale construction for so long that you can actually do it. So I was thinking, what? <laughs> what? This is even worse than I thought. So I thought, uh, you know, the, the U value and stuff, the insulation value, it's called R value in America. But, but uh, it's basically the, the regulations are it must have this amount of thermal insulation. Turns out that straw bale has about three times, you know, commercial glass wool. So it's, and then you immediately you think, oh, well, you know, if there's a fire risk. Well, it turns out it's not a fire risk. And even if you're worried about the forest, you could put flame retardant on it. And, you know, glass wool actually burns. So it's like, it's not, it's not very fireproof material. So, so the whole, the whole ask, the whole demand is crack, crack pot. So I said that, but then thought is it was well, just, it's nothing to do with it. He says, I don't really care about the carbon. I'm just trying to get a win. So I, I thought about this with, with Lionel and said, okay, using this example, using that IB example, can we get something which is midway between an ARG and traditional tactics like, like Gundy and all that? And we came up with a freaking doozy. I thought it was genius. But he said like, so I said to the faulty, look, we've got a middle ground compromise for you on this IB thing. And it's even better than, you know, it's, a, it's better than your wildest genes. I said, you know, you get to do a salt march. You get to do Gandhi salt march. What you do is you do, you start a thing called a green man march. You know, the green man is an iconic figure in English folklore. So it's, it leans on all the heritage of the green man. And part of the green man thing, when they put up thatch roofs, they put a doll in the thatch and the green man. So there's endless amounts of, of archetypal traditional footage to, to raid. And then I'm saying, you just get a bunch of people and you go on a salt march, just you know, putting straw in little old ladies' lofts. You just go around having a, a march like Gandhi and, you know, say, just um, doing it against the regulations. It's exactly like the salt march because Gandhi did the salt march because it was a stupid regulation. It's so easy to make salt and it was so stupid to ban it. So he targeted that because it was a ridiculous law. Well, it's kind of the same. I was thinking, we were thinking it's kind of the same. It's kind of ridiculous to have red tape. So we were, we said, it's a faulty. You've got to think of terms of making demands to, for the government to liberate, be more liberal. So you say, you know, the demand is the government must loosen up. The government must give us more freedoms. We need the freedom for people to just go and put straw in their own loft and insulate their loft. Because basically, you know, construction and stuff is a nightmare for convict. And then you go on, on, on a long march where you just, you know, or four weeks or whatever, you go house to house um, and try and get big crowds like, like Gandhi. We thought it was dynamite idea, but Forty shot it down because he said, look, I've been doing this for years. If I do that, I'll get 20 people. That's, that's all you'll get to do that. And so I didn't want to say it, but I said like, but Gandhi's salt march started off with 20 people. <laughs> it was just that it was, you know, took so long and became such a thing that, you know, the so the fact that it went on and got bigger and bigger and bigger was it went its own, you know, thing. So anyway, it kind of gives you a flavor of, of how um, entrenched he is in terms of things like traditional tactics, like getting arrested. So, so we just have to wear the thing that it's all about getting arrested. Um, so we just have to compromise on that point. Um, and so, yeah, so then, you know, this getting arrested thing is not going to work in America, I'll tell you that now. So it has to end. And so then, okay, one more disturbing thing. Then, you know, I said, look, 
you're probably going to, the IB thing in November is probably going to be, a, a September is probably going to be a success. But that's the end of the road, because then comes the police crimes bill. And effectively, you've just proven a tactic that's obsolete. He said, well, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't write the police crimes bill. He says, I'm not worried about it. And I'm like, <laughs> I was a little bit stunned, because it's virtually got his name written on it. And... Uh, yeah, he said, well, he, he says, I've talk, I speak, spoken to the police 20 times. I speak to the police all the time. We're kind of gauging it. It's not a risk. I was like, but you don't speak to Pretty Patel. You might talk to the local police, but, you know, Pretty Patel's got a fucking agenda. She didn't put this through Parliament just for jollies, you know. So I think what this means is that we will probably, you know, the police crimes bill is in its second reading in the House of Lords. It'll probably go through on the, oh, on the 14th of September, it'll have its second reading in the House of Lords. It'll probably go through pretty soon after that. But anyway, you'll, you'll get to do the IB thing in September. I think in 2022, when they do the much bigger thing, if it goes along with that, you'll probably get what it wants, you'll get all the coverage and stuff. He's also probably going to have to appoint a successor because although that'll launch it in America, it'll also probably, in my view, he'll probably be sent down for a long spell. So you probably just managed to get the ball over the line to start in America. And at that point, he'll be out of the game. Now, he doesn't think that at all, but that's my it's a divide there. So yeah. Um, so anyway, that's that's the 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 lay of the land. Um, and then there's some really other exciting modules which I think people are going to want to uh, get on board with. So okay. So one one of them is I mentioned about the the Senex Senex and Pua. So I put a thing up on XRMed about, you know, that's, um, and I put a link to the discussion with Hank and Hugh part three, which was about this, but that part, that, that personality, let's say, let's call her Joan, I guess, or Jean, because Jean d'Arc, um, hopefully. What the, the videos I was making with, with um, Hank there was like, what would happen? Would she turn into Jean d'Arc and break free of her controllers and turn into Jean d'Arc? So it's a very, very powerful symbol uh, to have Faulty and Joan uh, together. Now, if you, if you imagine something like that Nigel Farage interview of the BBC, if, if if Joan and Faulty were there together, um, I think that basically Nigel Farage would have had to eat that fucking beer glass <laughs> because I don't think it would have gone well for him um, because of that powerful archetype. You know, I mean, can you imagine if you just say, you know, like, but, but why are you doing all this for the fucking children? Huh? Idiots? <laughs> it's kind of like legendary. You could you put them in a box. So, so Fawlty, uh absolutely got that and surprised me because he said he's been thinking the same way. <laughs> so, so, so sometime before Cooperation Day, he's, he's going to try to get through to John and get around her handlers, which is not going to be an easy task. Uh, but to with the with the intent of training her to be Joan of Arc. So, yeah. So that's that's a cool cool thing right there. So the other thing, okay. Now, the other thing that Forty wants us to do is to design a new 
kind of recruitment meeting. So a module for a recruitment meeting. But so the, the, you see, the thing we're saying uh, is that it's Can very heavy, the stuff. So, so it, oh yeah, sorry, go. I'm sorry, I'm completely mystified about who this woman is. I got no clue. Can you can you just do something there? Somebody you just put it in the chat. For oh, okay, okay. Somebody put it in the chat. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Okay. So um, yeah. okay. So so now. These uh, these recruiting meetings that that Forty does with you know the hard talk and stuff like that is like, very impactful, but immediately there's a demand. You know they're going to change it to say that you know they're going to say straight up. They used to build up to it and then say we want you to get arrested. Now they're going to come straight out and say we want you to get arrested, bang, and then go through the reasons why. Um, uh, but. You know, it's very heavy going. And I think I told Fordy that I think he's going to get a reputation. So if everybody knows that all of these meetings turn into, you know, you sign a petition to get arrested or you sign a pledge that you will personally get arrested, I think then. Um, are you muting? That's like. Gary, are you. Sorry. Oh, do you mind muting? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh no, I, th I thought you, somebody. Yeah, I thought somebody, I thought you were on. You went on mute. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, sorry. Um, so. So um, yeah, uh, the idea is that I think that if you carry on doing that, you'll get a reputation, and basically people will pretty much assume that these things are basically like timeshare sales, and basically you do a hard sale like that. Um, people won't turn up anymore. So I, I, so based on that, we have a task to design how those meetings could be more like an ARG, more like the ARG style and lighter and more fun. And uh, so kind of a big, big task to do it there. Um, okay, that was the one thing. The other thing I was saying is I like, uh, we should look at recruiting from the youth. So the so you know basically Joan would Joan's organization movement would be a feeder for the, for the bigger movement. But it's see it's very I think it's a good idea to get uh, to people of like around the age of 15 on the assumption that by the time you know three years down the road they're gonna be 18 and then they're probably your best rebels. So Volti thought that too and he gave an example and he said you know the uh, yeah i was saying that you should go for the delinquent kids go for all these you know, go and give the hard talk in prisons where you've got literally a captive audience um and uh and he said yeah you know he you know or you know the currently the, the whole movement is kind of white bread it's it's basically rich white hippies and so he said they went to one place that was really working class kind of, um, you know, kind of real urban situation and did the hard work. And he said there were only eight guys, you know, it's like eight black guys there. And he gave the hard talk and that and they were Polacks. And he said, okay, well now I want you to go and get arrested. And immediately one of them said, my life's fucked. We all fucked. I'm in. I'm gonna get arrested. And the others were like, "Yeah, man, just count us in." And so then he said that those eight guys were, were worth like you know, hundred of the normal white kids who like yeah, 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 identity politics and woke and like yeah, the social justice warrior. And so like these guys were not full of shit. These guys were damaged by the system and they wanted payback. <laughs> So they were, they were, so he said, we got to do that. So I said, well, I don't know what you're allowed to do and say in, in those kind of really controlled environments where you get to talk to um, these, these guys, maybe in juvenile detention or something. But I said that, you know, Chris Hedges 
I think this is kind of bread and butter. So you should talk to him about what he what he does and what you're allowed to do, and look at what you can do in in the UK. And he said, "Well, yeah. I mean, Chris is a mate of mine. So <laughs> he said he's going to get him to probably come to the UK to go do the rounds with him. So that would make some tremendous visuals. But, but you know, basically." Chris had just been faulty going around. I presume you can film it. You can imagine what how, how impactful that would be as, as a recruiting tool. And and the other thing is, uh, <laughs> I hope, uh, I don't know who's listening from XR, but the other thing we really laughed about is it, it'll it really scare all the existing hippies in XR to their core because they, <laughs> they're like all white bread, you know, all talk and work. And then it's like, you know, here these guys, they, they don't take any shit. These guys will be damaged by the system and they hardcore and they like, you know, get, you know, we, we laugh because it's, it's really overdue to get these hippies to face the consequences of their lifestyle and look, look at the, the damage uh, from the people that they, uh, you know, the, the people with the system and the violence of the, the structural violence of the system. These are the guys at the bottom that have been crushed. And so it's it would do them a lot of good to actually see where all this, the hypocritical lifestyle shit, uh, you know, see the victims of it and actually have to give them a fist bump or whatever you're allowed to do in this year. But it would be a tonic for the organization. And those guys would be real rebels. So personally, I would stack the organization with them and, and just let the hippies leave. But uh, Tom, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I'm just, I don't know why. Maybe I've just been out of the loop for a bit. I'm just trying to think why. I thought that he was, uh, Faulty was kind of uh, disassociating himself from XR anymore. I mean, what's the point of continuing relations with them? Is it just because his inner circle are still very much connected with XR? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I understand the part about, yeah, you know, uh, putting, letting them get egg on their faces to prove a point to hopefully get, to split it and hopefully get them to come to faulty side. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, why, why are we, yeah, I mean, you just made the point. There's probably a lot more powerful uh, recruits in other places in society than bourgeois leftist fucking hippies. <laughs> I mean, fed up with them. I mean, yeah. What are they yeah, just, so they're all just I, I really, really, I, I really, really don't like the idea of starting over. So, 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 so one of the things, what, what did you say? It was somebody you say? Oh, so no, I really, really don't like. So, so, some of the things are, I, I think the whole organization is really in the eyes of the world. And the only thing that matters is I think that it's basically that symbol, number one, that name and faulty. The rest is just fucking superfluous. It's just replaceable. So it's it's kind of like McDonald's or the Olympics or something. It's like, if you saw that movie about McDonald's, that guy said in the movie, it's like, it's the name. He went to so much trouble because he knew that that name was it. So a lot of people don't, give um, a lot of credence to the, that that name or the importance to that name but and they just say oh it's branding we, we're not really we're not really going to go extinct but that's okay that symbol is hugely important that symbol is okay it's from the street artist called esp but um so uh tommy i think you've been muting it. So, no, I'm not. Uh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember we talked about that symbol. Yeah, it's hugely powerful. Yeah, I, I yeah. carry on. Oh yeah. So so anyway, this the the symbol is actually the solar wheel, and it's it's actually a symbol of death, and it's also got uh, the connotations of the yantra and things like that. But um, so when I outlined. Um, this how the arg would work. And I, 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 oh, by the way, I think I've cracked the way to describe it. 
and it, it's it worked. I described it to to Blondie uh, this way, uh, and it's describing how I did it from the point of view of a player and their experience as they go through. So in other words, you know, pretending that it was like exactly like the Institute movie and Latitude, and then I'd say, how would it be? So people come in, they don't know what it's about, they enter the game through a rabbit hole and all their experience, and they gradually come towards an induction basis. So there's a filter. Now the, the point of that filter is you keep out all the identity politics, all the people that are freeloading, all the people that don't think it's in a real extinction, but they, they're just piggybacking on it for some social justice cause or some left wing, um, you know, pet uh, project. So you leave all of those people perpetually playing the game. In other words, you just park them, you have a parking area where they just get all so bored that they, they don't uh, progress or anything. Then but you let it be known that there is a secret society called the Extinction Nazi. And you, you have, there's, you know, you, back to it's invitation only. That, and that's like the yeah. next level. Yeah, so the, the all the frivolous crap you talk about, that's kind of like, almost like a cover. It's just, that's the, that's the base level and yeah. So the entry. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so, so I described it in, in great detail and how, how it would be used for funding and stuff like that. And then, um, so then after this kind of induction, then I'm thinking that you'd have seven, seven ranks. So it has to be hierarchical and, and ranked. And then Fawlty is the cult leader, right? It's a cult. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, they, they didn't mind the cult terminology. They completely got, got it. They it was okay. And had quite a positive view and said, you know, they knew people that uh, have positive views about cults and stuff. But anyway, they completely accepted the idea that it is a cult with, uh, and Fawlty is a cult leader. So then, um, and we discussed the parameters of that and the responsibilities and, you know, have to make sure that power doesn't turn into sex scandal and money scandal and stuff but yeah, yeah the understanding is faulty's big enough that he he wouldn't you know turn into nexium or something like that you know so but now if they're like seven grades then i thought we we should be using um the myth myth ray cult because they they had seven initiatory grades and the great thing about the myth ray cult is you've got tons and tons of archetypes and and um, symbolic uh, referential material to to mine, but you you also have the protection that nobody knows what it was about, nobody knows what the ideology was. We, you can see the mules and stuff, and well, I can I think I can read the mules if you if you read my stuff, <laughs> I know exactly what a Torah volume is, and I know exactly what the rituals are. But for some reason, scholars have a blind spot. They don't they don't. Uh, they kind of mystify. But so I thought you can take all the symbolism, the murals, you can take the grades from Mithraism, and you can basically do the ceremonies because you can see what the ceremonies are. They have a Kistam uh, Mystica and stuff, Kistam Mystica and stuff in some of the pictures. But cool thing, they have an XR symbol. They have a fucking XR symbol in the fucking, it, I found, I can't find it. I went looking for it re, over the last few days. I couldn't find it again. But there's at least one mural where um, they have the solar cross. So in other words, it's the XR symbol without the top and bottom line. So it's just a round circle with a cross. That, that, that's, I mean, that's too good to let go of right there. Because you say the extinction artists goes back to myth. It's an offshoot of Mithraim and you know the Mithraic cult, and and because no one knows exactly the details of the cult, you just you know you can paint over anything you like. You can fill in the blanks. And I can do it bloody well. I've got a damn good story. And you've seen my my stuff, the the killing of the bull and all the stuff, the Taroctony and stuff. It's all it's all perfect. So anyway, I think it's too too good to let go, and also just the symbol the symbology has occult significance, right? 
So that symbol, that's in the solo disc, it actually represents the wheel. It goes back to the Aryans, the Aryans invented it. And the, the Sumerians, it's the Sumerian text. And so it's, it represented death. It became Omega in, in Greece, and that also represents death. So it's, it's like um, that ESP guy, I, I think he stumbled on it, but it's deep in our psyche. It's way too good to let go. And so then that's, uh, that also that, that symbol, that solar disk is actually um, the dark sun disk as well. You know, it's, it's like uh, a little dot in the middle of a wheel and then all these sig runes around it. So guess what? It took two paths. One of them became the swastika. So that's that dark sun solar disk. Is, so it is one of the origins of the swastika. So in, in essence, that symbol is the left wing swastika. So it, it's that powerful that you, it's, it's kind of a, if you imagine the Nazis without the red, white, and black in the swastika, it's like, what would you have? Nothing. So it's very, very powerful thing. It's, it's, I mean, personally, it's so powerful that I, if, if, if we can't use it, I would say we shouldn't bother. We shouldn't bother with the project. We should just move on. Um, here, but I, uh, personally, I would, I would do everything. For that yeah. Um, I was just go going ahead, to go. mention. Yeah, I was just going to mention. Uh, in one of Alan Watts's talks, he mentioned a. Uh, a book of, of symbols which had been published, uh, you know, early 1900s, something like that, and uh, how it had fascinated him because he studied, oh, you know, Tom, he Tom, can you just sorry, Tom, do you mind muting? muting? It's got an echo. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, go on, Gary, uh, sorry. Uh, Alan Watts mentioned this this book of, of uh, symbols, which apparently was a, a very early work studying the 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 development of some of the more you know the basic symbols the basic um uh structures of them and how they how they developed uh and um when i got the book it just as a matter of interest it's it, it been republished it's only very thin but it actually does go through like what you were just saying about the the solar cross and the swastika and all the rest of it showing the the way it develops and what the original meanings and, and significance of these things were so it's actually uh, quite relevant. So I'll try and put up a uh, uh, a link to the book um, because it just connects back of what you're saying. Then, yeah. So it's not only death; as it's also rebirth. So it's it's just too good to let go. You see, there are also connotations to the basket, and the you see that. I've always believed that the swastika, no, everybody has various theories for what the swastika really is. Um, it's, it's, it's sometimes been used as, as the solar disk and rays, you know, sig runes or the rays. And so, but it's, it's, not, uh, it's not convincing. Um, it goes back very far. A lot of people think that it's the cross weave on mammoth tusks. So it's it might have even been a Neanderthal symbol because um, there's a swastika pattern on um, on uh, mammoth tusks if you if you cut them, but uh, I don't think so. I think that what it is is it's the the start of a basket. So it's in other words, it's the eye of a basket. If you if you're making a basket, you fold it over four times like that and then fold it over again, and that's what it symbolizes. It's basically the the starting point of a basket and. and there's lots of evidence for it because even in South American Indians and uh, Native American Indians, they they have a swastika at the bottom of the basket, just with, made out of exactly how you start when you weave a basket. And so what it is 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 Sibylle's womb. It's it's the the cosmic dome, um, and it represents a womb. The basket always represents a womb. And they in back in Gebekli Tepe on the vulture stone, there are three baskets. And you can see there's one has a snake coming out of it. it it's got to be the same shit because when you get to the the um, Eloisian mysteries, they all around a kista mystica with the snakes in a baskets and you know or Orpheus tradition and all of that. And there in in some of the murals in the Torobolium with the Mithraic cult, you can see somebody in a basket with a snake 
And so you know what the ceremony is. It's a rebirthing ceremony. Straight out, you know that. So, so you can raid all of that and do that all over. I'm, I propose to really do that as part of, you know, some of the, the grades and stuff that people are initiated into. So it's, um, it's all part of uh, building the egregore and getting people... You see, Fawlty completely understands the, all the psychology. The, um, he knows the Jungian psychology and stuff, and he completely got it. That, that you know, if you want really dedicated people, you have, they, they're dedicated to the group, they're dedicated to the movement. They, you, it's kind of irrelevant about climate change and all of this stuff, you know. To, to get people to go and get arrested for something so abstract as 1.5 degrees or something, it's like, not a lot of people want to do it. But, you know, time and time again, like the White Rose Society started the Boxer Rebellion. So time and time again, people have used a secret society or cult format because people are so dedicated to the cult, the movement itself, that they will do anything. If you, you know, if the leader says, you know, it's necessary that you go and run at bullets um, because we're going to hit, you know, two degrees Celsius or five degrees Celsius, then they will. But they're not doing it because of the planet or what scientists say. They're doing, you know, or eco anxiety. You see, the problem is the fuel that's running Extinction Rebellion now is eco anxiety. So it's that fuel you run out of very quickly. You know, just one march, just one one arrest, and you think, well, I've done my bit. And this is a real. Problem. I've done a little bit. Then they're like, oh, I've done it. I'm, I've at least I can tell my kids that this. And then they, it's they just getting a bit, an ancillary. So it's uh, it's it doesn't stick. So so yeah, he totally gets it. It's just it's just leaving behind all the old ways is is going to be difficult. And and but anyway, the format works if if um, you know he's an autocratic leader. Um, and he just dictates it and everybody else can be on the bus or fuck off. And then, then that's the way you, you get this through. Um, and then, yeah, but you see there again, it's, it's tough for him. He's going to lose friends and stuff. So, so Hugh, uh, some time ago, I think when we were talking about this, I, I said to you, um, why wouldn't you just let, for instance, the, 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 the section of XR members who will be alienated once this event occurs. Uh, but um, you use them to continue business as usual as a kind of a front. In other words, just let them keep doing what they're already doing. Um, and so there's this kind of facade that, 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 that the organisation is just carrying on. But meanwhile, the the new the new autocratic leader is doing all sorts of other things in the background. So you kind well, of why just, do you want the facade that the organisation is still carrying on? Uh, because it, it it's a it's a, a subterfuge. It's, it distracts attention and it creates confusion, and people are trying to work out what's going on. And if you if you if you do that, it's like a a, a diversion while you're off doing something a little bit more important that diverts a bit of attention from you. Um, yeah, it's fine if it's a diversion, but it's a very expensive diversion to have a third of the people involved in sucking the resources out of the organization. Um, what do you tell them? It's like, yeah. oh, well, we have to cut your budget to 10 grand or something like that. It's like, well, the you know, thing is, you, it's you, a, it, you, look, if it, yeah. it would have to be for real. If it's a diversion, there would have. It would have to be managed as a diversion. Well, I'm it's assuming that those people... And so it only works. They would only do the diversion if they were, yeah, were in on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can't fool them into saying like, oh, no, you carry on doing what you want and keep them as a diversion because they're not going to be fooled for two seconds. As soon as they don't get enough resources, they're going to be fooled. Yeah. So how much could you spend on this diversion? Maybe yeah. 10 grand a year. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if they're only given 10 grand, they'll, what's the point? They would leave anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just wondering. I mean, what do we, why do we need a version? We basically the the um the the thing is to I think in my mind is to get 
everybody in the in the UK basically. So recruitment can carry on in the UK, but it's it's recruitment for the management to run the rebellion in the US. So basically, it's basically the brains would be in the UK, and then all the operation would be in the US. So it's like all. Well, Everybody else can just fuck off and do fucking animal rebellion or some shit. But it, or do their identity politics or some bullshit. But just, you know, fuck off and die. <laughs> the planet's on fire. And so, yeah, that's, uh, I think that works. So, so you can't break any laws in, in Britain. You have to be absolutely squeaky clean. So if those stupid tosses went and did something that was illegal and, you yeah, you might be accused of being an organizer. No, you want to be absolutely clean in Britain. There's, there's no point in doing, act, you know, actions in Britain. There's no point in doing activism in Britain. Even if you took over the, Euro, you know, parliament. If you, if you overran fucking Buckingham Palace, you wouldn't do anything. Britain is not relevant. It's just too parochial too small it's just not consequential enough so what what if you extend that what you just said to to america um what happens then uh regarding china well you see i think this could i mean i don't know china i don't know what you can do in china but i think this could roll out to china because Okay, the Chinese are not stupid. They knew where the Falun Gong were going, right? So if, if you did the Falun Gong or something in America, you would get away with it because they wouldn't get it. But, you know, the Chinese knew that the Falun Gong wasn't about meditating in the park. They knew damn well where this was going. Right? But in so it's difficult. But you can, I think, get a secret society, but it might not be fun, right? It might, it might not be fun and an arg and, you know, a game. It, it might be kind of a really serious shit. You know, um, which, yeah, well, I guess. Well, I mean, how would you see the economic situation? Like if America became essentially defunct, how, how much would that actually affect China just, just as an economic situation, do you think? I mean, is there domestic... China's fine. Hmm. China's fine. Basically, there are too many threats. There's, you know, from resources, from food security, from, you know, the threat, threat of war and climate change is going to get them. They just got too many damn people. So they, you know, basically they, they have to be authoritarian and keep a lid on it. But you can't keep a lid on 4 billion people when things are going against you. So the, the only thing keeping Xi in power now is that he's delivering 6% growth. He, he can't have many years left delivering 6%. six, uh, 6%. So, yeah, China's, China's going to look like South Africa a lot quicker than America. I, I have another question, if, you, if I may. Um, at the start of the meeting, you mentioned geoengineering, and I was always curious to see uh, what was the feedback you got from the people you met um, as 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 that as a priority on well on a top list of of uh, of dangers? How, how what was their take? They they get they completely understand the narrative of team human against the transhumanists. But but Fawlty did say once he just dropped in like I don't know maybe we're gonna need it at this rate we might need geoengineering. And then I, I gave him a long lecture on the dangers of it. But you see, yeah, you can't say, you know, have this narrative. The whole, one of the things I completely sold him on was the idea that we're doing as a psyop. And I explained to, to Blondie and him, didn't know how psyops worked or what a psyops was. And so I explained it to them and said, it's a, it's a mind war, it's a narrative war where you get the enemy narrative and you dissolve it and you get your own narrative and make it cohere more. So our narrative, it's very easy. This is, this is the winning strategy because, you know, if you, if you make it team human and life 
against futurologists, transhumans, engineers, and death, we win. The majority of the people hate this shit. Although all the transhumanists have you know, cornered the press, the majority of people hate it. They don't like this shit. And so, the, so we get the mind, we win the mindset if we just have the argument. If you then allow, oh, but we might need to allow a bit of geoengineering, you've undermined your own narrative and your own credibility. So, yeah, I mean, we, but anyway, I'm not too concerned about that because in general, they, they inward looking, all of the left and activism on the left is very insular and inward looking. They don't, you see, my way of thinking is you, you can see in the bigger picture, there are all these opportunities coming up. For example, they're printing us into oblivion. We're about, you know, the signat, we're about to do the French signat. The signat in France turned into the French Revolution. So basically this money printing is gonna turn into a revolution. Now the problem is, while we doing our fucking head up our ass, you know, animal rebellion and shit, other more savvy types like the Mormons and the Scientologists and loads of people from, you know, the right wing stuff from Steve Bannon and Trump and everybody, they know what's coming and they all jockeying. The vultures are circling America. And so you got to take cognizance of these events that are coming up. It looks like we're going to war. All of these are revolutionary events, but they don't, they barely know, look at the news. You see. So they're not anticipating, you see, what you've got to do is anticipate an event in the world and then take that opportunity. So you've got to find out, wait, wait, wait for your opportunity, bang. What, you see, the, the way professional activism in now is done is you direct it. So you go and force the issue, you go and do the, the action and you go and do a blockade and you're forcing the argument. Well, that's a crap, crap way. It's not, Sun Chu is completely against that. He says, you know, he says only a bad general seeks out a battle. But that's what you are. You're a bad general going bang, 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 bang against the system. And you wonder why you get a bloody nose. It's because you're fucking useless as a, stuff, as a strategist. So what, what you've got to do is read the I Ching and say, okay, now is the moment of preparation. Now we have to prepare. And so, you know, but saying everything is mixed, confused. So it says, that means prepare. So you, then suddenly you can see what's going to happen. You can see that basically we're going to have hyperinflation. Then they're going to be people running on the streets. Then you need to prepare for that day. So, so part of it is to uh, why it works with the cult is you you aggrandize it. You make this thing, you know, the clash. Everybody's ready for the clash. Or in QAnon was the storm. So you know, everybody's preparing, you're doing every millions of things for the storm. And then one day, the government blinks, and then you, then you say, today's the storm. And then, so, and then you know, the whole machine swings into action. But you see, what, you're just going like bang, 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 bang. Oh, there's COVID. Okay, we have to stop. It's like COVID was a fucking genius opportunity. Everybody was at home. We could have done so much if we'd got started before COVID. It would, it's basically, it's, it's an e-rebellion. you got to get out of the streets and stuff. It's just retarded. But anyway, this will come. I mean, we've got to establish, you know, slowly, slowly, we have to establish our credibility. We have to show that we can actually do shit. So we're proving ourselves now. And the first thing we need to prove is this, um, you know, getting the, the after party for the, the IB thing. And then that'll, you know, if we get it, if we do it really well, People say, like, that was fucking awesome. We've never seen anything like that. You know, get them to say, like, I've been doing CND, I've doing all of this shit. Say, what was that shit? That was, that was, we need more of that. And then, then we will establish our credibility and we can do that. But on that point, I think we must get uh, to, to Meow Wolf and we must get to Jeff. And I think that the sale to Jeff is, look, Jeff, three things, you know, this first, 
we would like to like you to restart the Latitude Society, um, or, or rather just continue with the Latitude Society with our help, and you, you use it to feed people into Extinction Rebellion. Is that if not that, that's our preferred thing. If not that, then just license the thing. Just give us the license to all the stuff that you've done. So we can use all those, you know, all the the intellectual property and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, other, otherwise maybe the third thing is, you know, we just have you as a paid consultant. But that's low on the bar. But I, I mean, I think we, we should say we want to buy the rights to the stuff you've done. Our first thing is that you keep the rights and just carry on. You want your talents <clears throat> and then you feed Extinction Rebellion. Uh, and then uh, if not that, buy the rights. Let us yeah. uh, The same with me, I will. <clears throat> I would say like, you know, find out about their politics and say, can, can we just use, you know, a small part of the stuff you've done as a, as a feed into um, into Extinction Rebellion. So in exchange, we will drive customers into their stores and we just have, you know, a small area for as much as they can spare, just a few meters square where it would be, you know, the, you know where we'd have like the kith or something out of in bright accent. And then, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll write up what I, ex I explained to, to Blondie about um, how how it looks as a player going through all of this from soup to nuts. And then I think that that'll be the way um, to, that'll be the way to communicate it. So we don't have to use words. In terms of what we call it, I th I'm starting to think we just call it slyops. So it's not quite a psyop, but it's close. And so we say it's sly. Sly, I don't know. That's what I think. But anyway, we, we can't call it an ARG because everybody thinks it's a video game. Um, we can't call it a PSYOP because it's not really. Um, so, yeah, I, I, we just have to have a neologism and I thought maybe slide. But anyway, I think that's the way to describe it to people. So then you say, you know, this, give them a document and then they they see what the user experience is of Supernats through, through the, the game. And then, then they'll get it. It's going on. Yeah, that is annoying how everyone always thinks it's a computer game. I tried to explain it to someone and she, it was just someone completely um, green, like you had no idea about any of the stuff. I was just explaining about it. And she straight away said, but how are you going to create a video game when you're up against, I don't know, like EA games or something else? No, it's not a video game. Maybe it's alternative reality theater. I don't know. It's like street theater. I don't know what it is. It's it's theater, I guess. Yeah, but then where's, where's the revolution in it? Then everybody thinks, oh, you're one of these idealistic artists who think they can change the world with their art. <laughs> it's like, no, we're talking about organize. It's a organizing principle. But yeah, we've had that so much. I think Eric McVeigh said that to us, you know, I think. How many times did we say to him it's not a computer game? Then afterwards, after we spoke to him, he came back and said, you should talk to these guys. Oh, who are these guys? They develop computer games. Oh, fuck off. Didn't we say about a million times it's not a fucking computer game? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The same thing we got from Darren Allen in the email he sent us. It's very difficult. It's really Maybe we should have no name for it. No name game. Mm. The only interesting parallel with computer games, I would say, is um, did you see that thing I posted on XR Med about um, it was that guy and he'd done an analysis of how where the world is going, where the technocrats want the world to go, and it's that gamification. So you could use oh, that. I haven't, to say, I haven't seen it yet. I, were, I, I saw it there, but I, had, I didn't have time to watch it yet. Yeah, yeah. it's a really good analysis. It's just it's the same thing. It's it's team human against the technologists you know against brave new world but he was analyzing some old computer games from the playstation one in the 90s so soul reaver and another one and it was a really interesting um little um 
sort of audio essay he did about that. And it, it, it is quite relevant to what we're thinking about, um, how, you know, in the game you you get freedom and you have free choice and free will. And, um, yeah, it's kind of, it's definitely relevant. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels there, I think. Um, you have to do, watch. Do you think it's worth, uh, do you think it's worth reaching out to him? Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. He's, he's, he's kind of on the, the alt right. I think you'd say he's sort of partly nationalist. I'm not really sure what his feelings on abrupt climate change are. In, in so far as I can tell, it seems that he's probably like a lot of the sort of the alt right or the nationalists who just think that it is most likely, you know, globo homo, i.e., you know, the globalists using that um, as another way to, you know, get us to this new technocratic future. I think that's his take on it. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got some interest. He's a yeah, really interesting guy, but he's just an ordinary Joe who's doing his own analysis on what what the hell is happening with the world. Um, but yeah, interesting, interesting thoughts. <laughs> Tom, is that, uh, is that Morgoth's review you're talking about, is it? Yeah, that's Morgoth's right, yeah. Review? Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, the one, yeah the, that's the one comparing Asimov and, and Oswald Spengler. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah interesting yeah. chap, yeah, he's got some... It, it, was, it was really good to listen to, yeah, yeah. 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 So anyway, I, I broached the topic of the problem we have in getting the attention of these you know, artist types and the response was welcome to my world <laughs> this is a, you know most people talk and talk and talk and talk and when you say hey maybe we should do something suddenly you might as well have said you know suggested that you grab the po the pope by the pussy or something it's like it's like everybody likes to talk about it Nobody wants to actually do anything about it. So that's, it's like, it's, that's the reality of it. It's, it's rare as anything that people will tra translate their, their talk to action. One thing I would say, another interesting thing is why I, I, I definitely agree with you. I know you, I think you've said in the past that we do need to kind of reach out more to the right is because there's an awful lot of people on the right who are saying we cannot beat this new agenda just set aside the whole climate change you know abrupt climate change we cannot beat the the technocrats if you just come with stats and data and try and fight them with our own weapons we have to get to a new like spiritual level and say not religion but well it could be for some people but we need to just say this is evil and we need to cut through it like that. You need to, you need to be able to tell a story, a narrative. So, and a lot of them are talking like that, which again I think is has massive parallels with what what we're trying to do, what you're trying to do here with this um, arc to get change. So I think there is yeah definitely something to tap into there to say, look, there's a, there's a new way. There's a there is a um, a way to tap into that spirituality. Um, yeah. So, so Forty, Forty expressed exactly the same sentiments, and he said that the problem with the left is they they too intellectual. They'll intellectualize the cows, you know, till the cows come out. And he's saying that we've got to get spiritual, and you know, the deeper psychology. So we're absolutely on board with that, and he likes this way of doing that. So he's really sold on it. And the the other thing is, they you know the idea of having vanilla religion so you have all the trappings of the sacraments and the ritual and the ceremony but no ideology or dogma it's kind of a joke religion and the same with with protest i would like to do the same with protest like in the institute movie where they had a, a big march street march with placards that were blank you know and they walked around saying you know we demand more nonchalance and stuff you want to do stuff like that make Use the mirror, shine it on people. Particularly like XR, you know, you want to do a parody. In fact, it would be good to do a parody right now to their stuff. You basically, whatever they're doing, you do an absurdist artist thing. I would have done it if, if I had the resources. But, you, you know, 
it's easy to find out what they're going to do and when they're going to do a banner drop on they just put a banner drop on on the guild hall completely pathetic it's just you know they start out with identity politics first of all so it's it would be cool if you go next door and you drop a white banner and then you you know completely white no writing on it nothing completely blank and then you start saying you know we want more nonchalance we want you know, nothing and they just you know parody them and just showing them how stupid it looks because they would see it if, if they could see themselves you see they can't see themselves they think this is wonderful because they're having a fucking orgy of narcissism and that's what the lf always fucking does so it would be great to to you know even even for the rebels themselves to say we're going to do a big street mark right okay what are the posters going to say fuck all and they say and then if you got them to do it they would see themselves for the first time they're saying this is ridiculous they'd see themselves what like they look on tv they can't see themselves on tv because when they see it they're oh look this is that's awesome look at that oh we're making an impact and women no you're not you're a joke but they can't see it they can't see through the eyes of like the average britain yeah so anyway the the Brit hates us. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> They're getting very unpopular. And at the end of this, they so at the end of the IB so, so if if everybody gets thrown in prison and we really sent down for ten years, you know, three quarters of the country will fucking rejoice. So they're missing badly. In that, in that. So, so anyway. Anyway, so yeah, so Foley absolutely gets it and gets the, the, the program here. So um, yeah, he's just completely at sea of you know how to do it. So he's got to rely on us and, and people we can get involved like Jeff and stuff like that. But the but um, he thought he thought exactly the same as, as I did. And he said that like I talked about the money and getting seed capital and stuff, and he said, nah, it's as easy as falling off a lot. He says he's getting calls from you know billionaires. He says the billionaires in California are crapping themselves. They're calling and say like they're just desperate to throw some money at you know the problem. So the the thing is to to have an idea, something new. Everybody knows nothing's working. You know, there's a stalemate, a stalemate. Everybody's despondent. So you have to pick people out of their despondency, and then this this plan will do it. So if we can articulate this plan and basically sell it to billionaires. Um, he thinks the same as me, that the money will just, you know, be slammed at it. So it, it's just, it's just we have to get something so that people can see it. This is very, very hard to understand, but we can do it in action. You know, you, you, can, you can't really explain to people this, but, you know, it's, we've done tremendously well. Because what thought is giving us a chance to do is to show show this in action if you can show it in action that's it everybody will see instantly the first five minutes they see this in action they'll get it you, but you can spend they can read a hundred documents and still they wouldn't get it but five minutes of seeing it in action i think is enough so it's a tremendous opportunity it's just a stunning opportunity that we've we've been given so i think we should seize it with with both hands well well that's well and it's been such a great team effort so um yeah sophie's gonna go and investigate more on the youth side and what you can actually do but uh, i'm assuming that you guys are gonna help out now <laughs> and volunteer for stuff um and so yeah as as things go um i'll tell you what the tasks are and especially in you know stuff in um discord on the discord server but um yeah it'll be an awful shame if we if we can't you know if we had this opportunity and we we didn't shape and we just blew it so we should really make a, a huge effort because you know this this might change the world it could change a lot of people's lives maybe millions even so don't don't forget that we if we have a story and we have a thing a new thing that we're doing um 
you know, all this, we, all the money comes and all the celebs come. You get celebrity endorsement. And just, you just need one global celebrity. That would be it. That would, it would be success all over the world. So it's a big deal. So we've, we've achieved an amazing amount with very little. So let's, uh, that's not low. All right. <laughs> well, thank you okay, so much. Any more questions? Or still talk? No, I, I wanted to say thank you to yeah. you because it must have been it must have been a very long and harrowing and difficult uh, travel because I know that way of traveling and everything and going to that horrible wasteland and going all this way from where you are is just like must be very. It's it's great what you've done. I mean, I'm so grateful. Yeah, it's um, travel in these days is just horrible. I mean, it after nine eleven it sucked, but now it's just complete. I don't know why anybody's traveling. It is so fucked up, and people are saying, "Well, it's just three hours with a mask." Are you fucking kidding? That shit. I I, I had to do four COVID tests, and they like cost a hundred and sixty pounds and shit. It's like. There's, everybody's taking the piss. Everyone's taking the piss. It's all a business opportunity. But yeah, and I, 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 I mean, all the stories. I won't, won't bore you with the fucking details. But it was again, what always happens to me when I go against the system. My phone, they wouldn't let me on the fucking plane in in England because they said I don't have my uh, COVID test, and I couldn't. My phone died while I was was looking. I couldn't find the damn thing where they'd done it. And then this, this stupid bitch in the thing, she said, no, that's that's just an application. That's not the real certificate. And I said, it's a bloody real certificate. Look at this, read this. And then some other guy came and said, no, no, it looks like a real certificate and everything. And then as he's saying it, it dies. <laughs> and so they went like, oh, okay, get on the plane. But you've got to, if anything goes wrong, you've got a 1,500 pound fine. And so, yeah, it's it's terrible. And then when I got to Greece, they didn't even want to see the blasted thing. They just gave me a, they said, uh, you you selected for random testing. So I had to go to another freaking code. And I did the self test that you gave me. So it was like, oh man. But anyway, it's just an example of how, yeah, this society doesn't fucking work. And, and technical society doesn't work. Everybody's hating it and everybody's telling themselves, stories like yeah you know, oh it's okay well we <laughs> it's like they're lying to themselves it's horrible but yeah it was it was a it was an education it was a very big deal for me and then i you know it's nice to go and see london and stuff and a lot of memories for me so it was it was it was great it was great but anyway our dazzling dazzling success I was, uh, I know, I didn't expect even half of this, so. but that's all thanks to you guys. So it, at some stage now, we're going to have to stop advertising these Extinction RD, um meetings. I mean, I think we should still put them up as videos on the YouTube channel, but we, we should stop, um, we should stop, um, announcing them so it's kind of like anybody that wants to be on board now is kind of they can come on board later but they're gonna have to struggle but i'd say we should carry on with these meetings at the same time and you know if you're not in on the game it's like you know it's um pe people i mean people can it's not excluded but if people say on youtube or something say hey how do i how do i get in on this you say oh you got to work you've got to find the link <laughs> we're not telling you and then, uh, levels of initiation with special special chanting and special formulas and clothing and everything it's <laughs> it's getting it's getting to that stage and and then and then uh, i can't see that xr mad itself has much longer to go but we'll see so what do the, what do we the use the xr med to isn't there an XR Med too? No, uh, you'll see. <laughs> I'll see, or maybe not. Okay. 
all will be revealed. <laughs> all will be revealed, yeah. <laughs> In Kairos time, right? <laughs> In Kairos time, well, yeah. Well, and we packed a lot of Kairos time into into these uh, few days, and and last night then met these Czech people that we said come on over and I had drinks with them. We went to we had drinks on my boat, drinks on their boat. Went to bed very late, and anyway, they um, have an acapella group that they said they'd do the ceremony thing with, and we had this interesting discussion where I said about these two times in Greece that we forgot, and she said. Kairos time. Uh, uh, wait, how did you know that? <laughs> she said, yeah, Kronos time and Kairos time. We had a long discussion about all of this. So, so it's amazing how when these things are in the air, <laughs> you just seem to get these synchronicities everywhere. Well, okay, on that note, then, uh, yeah, we should, uh, yeah, find the music still and find, you know, the um, design the ceremony. Anybody who wants to design the ceremony with with um, uh, Lionel and me, then you're quite welcome to, but otherwise we have all the fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun designing all these things. So, all right. Okay. Let's finish off. Uh, just full still as usual. Om Paramatma Nenama Iti. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, you. Thanks. Right, thank you. Bye, -bye everyone. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care.